the special anti-robbery squad, SARS, has killed again. It's fast becoming an all-too-common refrain in Nigeria. In clear reference to the incessant murder of young Nigerians by operatives of the Federal Special Anti-Robbery Squad, uh, which is supposedly a special police unit that should be going after robbery gangs and syndicates. This past Saturday, the reports emerged of yet another killing of a young man by SARS operatives in Ugeli Delta State, Nigeria, which was also an armed robbery as they reportedly made away with the victim's vehicle. Reactions to this latest incident have been unusually strong and varied. Inspector General of Police, Mohammed Adamu, has ordered operatives of the unit to stay away from the streets. Forthwith, Vice President Yemi Oshimbajo says he's very angry at what he calls the continuing arrest and brutal killing of young Nigerians by members of the Nigerian police. But in a completely new twist, Minister of State for Labor and Employment, Festus Keyamo, has dismissed those reports as completely false. Is the case of SARS being politicized? And why should trained police officers, with a clear instruction to protect lives and property of Nigerians, decide on their own to kill and maim at will? Joining us now to talk about the implications of this latest incident is Shegun Awosonya, civil rights leader and social justice advocate, convener, NSAS Reform Police NG, and president and founder. Social Intervention Advocacy Foundation. Good morning, and thank you for joining us on The Morning Show. Always a pleasure to have you. Good morning. It's always a pleasure. Thank yeah. you for having me. Well, Shagun, uh, you've been on this, uh, on this matter for a very long time. You want SARS ended. Yes, now, four times in the last four years, we have had this institution, Inspector General of Police, say, oh, the Special Anti-Robbery Squad has been disbanded. Checkpoints have been uh, eliminated. Uh, there should be no police official uh, wearing mufti on the streets of Nigeria. Four times we have seen it. But what is the guarantee that the latest directive will be followed by policemen? Thank you very much, sir. I think the misgivings that we're having here is actually the action of the IG, you know, which is no longer consistent according to uh, what we can see on ground. What happened in the past was after 2017 when the NSAS campaigns kicked off and we got a presidential order in 2018 for the overhaul of the entire system. You know, number one, the order was actually misunderstood or I would say that it wasn't really the commander's intent was not clearly understood because the overhauling the unit or overhauling all tactical squads and reforming the, the police NG should not be situated in the hands of the same people. You cannot ask the police to be a judge in their own case. But again, what happened then was that the IGP Idris put a protocol in place and they started working on how they can have a sustainable and formidable you know, reform by engaging the necessary stakeholder engagement and then having a law that, are actually, that can actually be put in place to stem all this. Because every stopgap or every protocol that is put in place, they are only temporary measures you know, which are not laws. Anybody can repeal them. Now, after that law, after that protocol was put in place, we enjoyed peace on the street. We got positive feedback until the IG was changed and this new IG came in. And the very first thing the IG did was to repeal that protocol and the killing resumes. So by the time the killing resumed, every effort, you know, that we put in place to let the IG understand that the impunity is back on the street based on his decision fell on deaf ears until two years later, after another clamor, and then the IG went to go and dig up the same protocol and put it in place. How exactly are we to guarantee that this will work? How do you hope to get to, to win public trust by doing something like this without guarantees, by acting in, 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 in a, me a manner that doesn't show that you understand the pulse on the streets? And this is exactly what the issue, the issue that we're dealing with right now. And they were saying that, again, and the notion that we're dealing with a few bad eggs. I, I think it is misinformed and uh, misinterpreted. We are not dealing with a few bad eggs. We are dealing with the culture of impunity. The police is not just turned this way overnight because of some bad recruitment or so. It has been like this for many years, and it, has, it is getting worse because we keep on dealing with the symptoms instead of looking at the root cause. And the root cause is to implement all the laws that we have to the letter. 
There is no point where police will still be torturing in a country where you have an anti-torture law of 2017. And that anti-torture law has not been implemented because we have not been able to bring one single officer to book for torture since, since it has been uh, enacted. And we also have uh, the, the Administration of Criminal Justice Act of 2015. If these laws are being implemented, there's no place for SARS as presently constituted. And then we have the new police act, which fundamentally repositions the police for service enhancement, you know, by, uh, for enhanced service uh, delivery, by ensuring that they are accountable and uh, uh, transparent, by ensuring that they respect fundamental human rights according to the African Charter, and by also ensuring that the part will be in alignment with the new law, which protects the rights of the people. So this is exactly what our expectations are. And if these things are not done this way, if we continue to deny and dance around the chairs, nothing is going to be because trust the reforms that have been put in place. Nobody is asking police to reform themselves. We're simply saying, be accountable. We're simply saying, get these people off the streets. It's not just telling them to... Okay, we'll take a quick break at this point while uh, trying to re-establish audio connection with Shegwan Wusunya, civil rights leader and social justice advocate and convener and SARS. We'll be right back. It's to The Morning Show. Welcome back to The Morning Show here on Arise News. We're still having a conversation with Shegun Awosonya, civil rights leader and social justice advocate, convener Ensas on the matter of a special anti-robbery squad in Nigeria and the uh, Inspector General of Police's decision uh, to ban them from the streets of Nigeria. Well, Shegun Awosonya, we're back to you. We hope this time uh, your sound connection will remain stable. You were making a point, yes. if you may just continue. Yes, so we're simply saying that there's no reason why we have the Nigerian police operating um, outside the law. You cannot break the law to uphold the law. And we're not saying that uh, we're, not, we're not using or we're not deploying an idea that you can target a group or institution with uh, collective crime, regardless of the specific innocence or guilt of the constituent element of that group or institution. So that's not what we're looking at. It is the same thing that we are, the same perception that we are condemning in the police, you know, in their engagement with the people by deeming all our youths as criminals up on, uh, on site or indiscriminately checking phones and checking computers and extorting people of huge sums of money. And this is not something that we see as uh, a pocket occurrence or uh, uh, a scarce occurrence or something that's happening in is a little little spaces. It is something that is generally seen as the order of the day across Nigeria. So because of this, we're saying, let us implement the laws. Let us make sure that protocols that are put in place are respected and regarded. Let us say that, let, let us simply stick to the protocols. Let us simply stick to uh, uh, follow up with whatever it is that we say and not just let it be a political pronouncement. For many years now, we've been uh, hearing uh, dismantling of roadblocks. It has never happened. Our highways, the way they are, they are very dangerous places. A lot of people, you know, have been complaining about their engagement with police officers. In fact, most of them would prefer to face armed robbers than see police officers because there are so many checkpoints and people are being extorted on a daily basis. On the street, our youths are not safe. And we're simply saying that there are also patriotic officers in the system who need our support to fix the system. And likewise, there are millions of innocent citizens who are dying to freely express themselves on their fatherland without being profiled or killed unjustly by rogue police units. So it is not to, you know, see most of these complaints as a personal attack. The police is not a court. The police is meant to serve the people. And if we are to move forward as a nation, if we are to move forward as a civilization, law and order, rule of law, and respect of fundamental human rights must be paramount. This is exactly what we're saying. Thank you, Shekhan. Of course, it's not a personal attack. I mean, the police and the military deserve all our appreciation and all our support because they're the only ones standing between us and all kinds of evils in the world. But the whole idea is to just get the best service to the public. Of course, that's clear. But you said something earlier, get these people off the streets. Can you explain what exactly they are doing on the streets? Why would a special task force like a SARS 
being, having um, routine patrols, they call it, having checkpoints on the streets? Is it a problem with police recruitment? And what are your thoughts on the fact that the Inspector General of Police was accused by the Police Service Commission of trying to usurp their functions in his recruitment drive? You'll recall that the Inspector General of Police recruited 10,000 police constables. And now the case is before the Supreme Court. The Court of Appeal ruled in favor of the Police Service Commission. How do all these um, quagmires and bottlenecks affect the Nigerian public? Yeah, thank you very much. It, sh it simply shows that there is no harmony within the police family itself. And if there's no harmony within, there can't be a harmony without. And this is one of the reasons we find police um, units, ad hoc units for that matter, who were created for certain purposes at certain times, who has been reinforced or been forced on the people despite the fact that they have outlived their purpose. As a way now, and after, we keep saying SARS because that's the most uh, popular name that we have within the tactical squad. There are several other others who are operating beyond uh, uh, limits, without limits, who are actually uh, breaking the law on a daily basis, whose duty most of the time is to roam the streets, kidnap people or abduct people and extort them of huge funds. We have, of course, there are records also of the number of cases that have been, uh, that we have interventions on. And then we can see how much we are recovering in the millions on a monthly basis. So we cannot continue to, uh, uh, to romance these things and then assume that things that we're dealing with a few bad eggs. We're dealing with a culture. And the only way you can fix anything when you have a culture like this that is threatening to, to, to swallow the entire country, especially with your police unit, is to be sincere with yourself and to admit certain things. We cannot continue to argue with ourselves. Within the police system, it is the duty of the police service commission to recruit, to promote, and also to discipline police officers. You cannot take that from them. But because of the badly written structure or badly written protocol within the system, where the police IG is the one funding the activities of police service commission, there's no point where at certain point you won't feel I can actually do their work since I'm the one paying them. And that's exactly what we're having now. So the, 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 the police service commission seeking interpretation of law, of course, they are going to always uh, succeed. You know, the question now is how do we, where do we go from here? If you look at the police recruitment as a way, a lot of uh, 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 the, the rec recruitment slots are given to politicians. And the only opportunity, this is the opportunity for them to bring in their thugs into the system, who eventually will be drafted into the uh, tactical squad for uh, political necessity. You know, so with that, they are not going to respect the law. They are not going to think that they are there to serve anybody other than to oppress people pending the time the new election circles come. And that's exactly what we've been dealing with. Because if you look at the quality of people we have out there, they are not SWATs. They are not responding to any, to, to any distress call. They are just out there seeking whom to devour. And I've always said that when you put men of war on peaceful streets, you are going to have war. Are we also dealing with a culture of, apart from dealing with a culture of impunity on the part of SARS, are we also dealing with a culture of not doing anything and just being armchair critics? Are we also dealing with a culture of denial? I saw the CP of Delta State yesterday. They said, oh, it's almost impossible. SARS didn't do that. Minister of Labor, too, said that. There's a newspaper headline that says it's been banned. SARS has been banned. This is the fourth time in four years it's been banned. So are we also dealing with a culture of not doing anything about it? We'll just wait till this dies down and the next thing they'll be on the street tomorrow because that's what it looks like to me. Well, like I said, our engagement has been um, multifaceted. We have engaged the executives and they responded. We have engaged the legislature. We have the police trust fund bill uh, law. We have the police reform, uh, the police act 2020. That's as a result of the engagement which has been positive. Now, how do we implement this to ensure that the changes that we announce are not mere political uh, uh, audio, audio, audio reforms? You understand? So, we're, we're, and that's where implementation comes in. That's where monitoring comes in. That's where evaluation comes in. Over the years that they have been saying they've been uh, banning SARS, they have, not, they have not banned SARS at all. The first time we, we cried out for the end of the tactical squads, they came up with a reform. And with that, we said we don't want any reform. We have been saying that the, the objective of the advocacy is to shut down impunity, the culture of impunity, and reform holistically the Nigerian police. But again, their response is like not understanding 
you know, the, the core of what we're dealing with. They, are, they seem to want to relegate the entire police structure and then prioritize the tactical squad who deliberately, who are obviously not fit for purpose. So you cannot have people like that, you know, roaming our street, harassing citizens on a daily basis in, a, in, a, in, a, in an environment where everybody has phones, where evidence can easily be gathered. And the perception of police out there, the public perception of police out there is not positive. So we cannot continue to run this way. So the only way things can work is if government themselves are sincere. If the uh, president is giving an order for there to be a reform of police, it should not be directed at the police. They can't be a judge in their own case. You direct it to the police service commission. You direct it to the ministry of uh, police, uh, uh, the uh, ministry of police affairs. You direct it to the house committee on, uh, on on police affairs as well. Then you engage the the stakeholders. That's exactly how you can do a reform that everybody will be able to have ownership in, and that has not happened yet. So we're still dancing around around uh, the chairs, and which is one of the reasons why we are not applauding anything that we see today. Because it is, it is, it is not translating into change on the streets. Well, Shagun, very quickly, it's on record that the vice president, Professor Shimbajo, supports this latest development. He's been calling for the overhaul of the uh, SARS, and he has also commended civil society. What should civil society do if we do not see uh, this change uh, that the uh, Inspector General of Police has ordered? For example, if you see somebody on the road, uh, who is a policeman and is not wearing uniform, uh, is there a mechanism in place that we can engage? Yes, sir. As we speak, um, over the years we've been having, um, every single engagement that we've been having is with the police. We are not creating another uh, silo. We have been dealing with the complaint response unit of the police, which I believe must be expanded, which I believe the IG must pull closer to himself and spread across Nigeria to the extent that every report that we see on the street is taken by the police, uh, the uh, complaint response unit. They've been wonderful. They've been phenomenal. And in fact, with their working and their engagement with the uh, civil society is actually what is stopping people from taking to the street and causing uh, disturbance of public peace as we speak. So if the IG can actually engage this unit, listen to what the, re the report that they have, say go through the data they've gathered over the years, since 2017, I believe he's going to be enlightened and he's going to make proper decisions going forward. But until he meets them, because a lot of things, most of the reports that we, 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 we generate from engagement on the street, they are not getting to the IG. There are elements within the system who sit on this file. So by the time the IG act, is acting on the recommendation of two years ago as against the recommendation of now. So until those conundrums are removed, until those uh, 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 obstruction or until those uh, uh, obstacles are removed from the system, we probably will not have the direct engagement. Since the police IG has resumed office, I don't think he has engaged the critical elements in the NGO, in the uh, 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 civil society, who can tell him the truth, who can tell him exactly what is going on. So this is the, 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 the situation that we're having, well, the gap I, I, between the people and the government. Well, thank you very much, uh, Shagun Awosanya, for joining us uh, this morning and for your uh, very uh, penetrating insights, as always.